Hello. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the Range Rover suspension system, specifically uh, Range Rover Sports um, air compressor that's used to raise and lower the suspension. Uh, this particular pump is off a 2007 Range Rover Sports uh, from the US. Um, and I actually have an alternative, uh, an alternative designer pump here. This is a AMK pump. Uh, and this is the uh, the Hitachi pump. Uh, this one was actually a mistake. I shouldn't have purchased this pump, but uh, we're gonna take a quick look to compare the differences um, and talk about whether you could uh, retrofit one for the other and what the problems of that might be. I'm hopefully not going to try. Instead, what, I'm, what I've done is, um, after realizing that I bought the wrong pump, I went and looked for a rebuild kit for this pump, realizing that um, this pump could be salvaged and just rebuilt and so that's what we've done so uh, I found a company that sells uh, uh, a kit that repairs these pumps from the UK uh, they've got uh, could get this wrong like XK8 or 8K8R or something like that anyway I'll put a link to that in the below and they have a video on how to actually do this repair and uh, the first thing you got to do is get this thing off that's not actually too difficult there is um, uh, a box underneath the car and that holds the pump in place. Um, whoops, looks like this. Uh, this is mounted to the underside of the car uh, on a US vehicle that is on the driver's side, uh, the left side of the vehicle, and it's mounted about halfway back. And it is held on with uh, a bolt here uh, and a bolt here. And I think there may have been one more, but then this is two halves of a clamshell um, that keeps the uh, keeps the pump in place and also insulates against the sound uh, of, the, of the vibration of the pump. Oh, and yes, and additionally, there was uh, a bolt that goes through here. Um, that bolt sheared as soon as I tried to take it off. So the bolt just, just came off um, and uh, the stud is still there. So hopefully we're not gonna need that. And then you, pro you might also have some other problems um, when you pull off the bolt. Um, they are attached inside using, uh, I have another one. Okay. This one is in a packet. So there's some, uh, studs that attach inside the frame of the vehicle and they were completely shot, completely rusted. Um, when I removed, uh, the rusty bolts that held this in, uh, these things completely disintegrated and fell out. Um, so I replaced, uh, these studs. These are from, um, from Lowe's and they are, uh, they're not exactly the right size, but these are 5 16 um, of an inch uh, dash 18, which I guess maybe the thread. Um, but you can buy these at the store and then you can buy bolts that match these. So uh, I bought a package of these, where are they? Yep, I bought um these little bolts here there's a four of them in a package i've already used one because i've tested it to make sure it does is a good thread match for this one uh, and these are also 5 16 uh dash 18. um so these slide into the into the car these will then hold it in place um so you don't need to worry about saving those bolts that is um uh, not gonna, not really going to be a problem so the so the issue uh that i think happened with this pump um, was not so much the seals, okay? So apparently the seals inside the pump uh, can go bad. So in the video um, that I watched, uh, I was able to replace all these seals. It's not that big of a deal. Um, I will tell you that the, the manufacturer of the kit that sells the seals um, provides a good video, but there are a few um, problems in the video, like they don't show you how to replace all of the seals. So if you follow the video of Abetum, you find that you've got a few leftover seals and you scratch your head as to like, well, I followed the instructions. Why do I, why am I, uh, why am I missing? Why do I still have these leftover seals? Um, but if you look around, you'll find where they're from. You'll notice that, oh, there's a seal in here and they never showed me how to replace that. And I have another seal that's the same size. So I did that. That replaced, um, that replaced the piston seals inside here. Um, the glide ring um, replaced, uh, put sealants around here, unfortunately, uh, this end cap here is um, stuck on with silicon sealant. Uh, that wasn't included in the kit. I had to go and get some. And then the that that rebuilds the pump itself. The next the next potential problem is that this uh, dryer unit, which dries the air, 
um, before it goes through your suspension, um, our suspension components um, could be clogged up. And that I think was the problem that I was having. When I pulled this off, this is supposed to be a spring loaded cap, it's supposed to pop off with a spring. It didn't. When I looked inside, um, everything inside was corroded. Uh, the silica gel balls were mostly just powdered dust. Uh, and I think that had completely uh, clogged this up so that there was no um, air getting through here. Um, so I followed the video, that's a separate video, replaced uh, all the seals in here. There was one O-ring that wasn't included in the video like in the previous video. Uh, there's an O-ring at the bottom of here. Um, you can actually um, disconnect this dryer unit. There is one bolt, um, just one bolt here. Uh, removing this screw um, will allow you to just pull the dryer off and then inside of here there is an o-ring uh, it's a very small o-ring um, that you can replace so then you can take the whole dryer off rather than having to replace the desiccant with this whole thing self-assembled um, so let's talk a, for a second about what the difference might be between this pump and the other pump um, so this is the hitachi pump and you'll see that it's got two uh two connectors uh, this one here with the red and black cables obviously is the power for the pump. If you, were, if you apply 12 volts to, this, um, to these pins here, you will get the pump to function. The pump will, will go, um, you'll have air being sucked into one of these and uh, air being pushed out of the other one. Um, and uh, so that, that, that's all that's needed to control the pump. So then the question is what is what does this do? There's a second, you don't need this one for the pump to operate. And to be honest, I haven't completely figured this out. I know that I know I've identified a few of the wires. Uh, for example, there is a uh, temperature sensor uh, mounted to the pump that has two black wires and those two black wires go into this harness. So this is sending a signal to the car that your pump's not overheated. So that one we know. Um, there are two thicker wires, uh, one blue and one white and they go into, um, I've lost it, ah, here we go. So this uh, actuator here. Now, I don't even know what this actuator is for. This could be some sort of control valve, uh, although I don't really know why it's there or what its purpose is. But um, without that wire on that harness, this is not gonna work. So let's switch over for a second to the AMK pump. I hope I'm getting that right. I think it's AMK. It's been a while since I purchased this. Um, this one does not have the same wiring harnesses. You'll notice that there's no wires coming off it. Instead, there's only plugs coming in. So this plug here goes to the motor. So that must be the, the power for the motor. And then on this side here, where we saw similar to the position where we saw that actuator on the Hitachi pump, again, you see that there is an electrical connection here with two pins. So if those two pins are identical to on the, uh, what I think they do on the Hitachi system, then those would be the blue white wires. So if we attached this pump instead of that pump and we connected the red and white wires into the pump, into the pump and the blue and white wires into here, uh, I think we would be able to get the car to run with this suspension pump. That's gonna be my backup plan if that doesn't, if my, if my repairs to that pump don't work. Uh, problems that I'm gonna have, uh, I'm surely gonna have some fault codes uh, on the car because part of the car's wire harness is not connected as it's supposed to be. Might be able to get around that just by, um, uh, so for example, the thermal couple might be just being replaced by a, an open circuit, uh, sorry, a closed circuit wire. Um, so for example, uh, you may have changed brake pads and then found that the brake pads you bought don't have the wire sensor and you can just bypass the wire sensor by replacing it with a wire so that your car doesn't throw um, uh, warning lights about your brakes being worn out when you know you've just replaced them with fresh pads. So you know, that's a possibility. There's two other wires in there, however, that I've completely no, I have no identification for. Again, there could be more temperature sensors, but I don't know. Um, those are two more wires that go into here. So that would be a problem. Second problem, mounting this. Um, there is a mounting bracket for um, the uh, for the Hitachi pump. Uh, that mounting bracket includes uh, space for um, a bolt here and a bolt here. And that's actually what attaches it to a frame. 
We're going to talk about the frame now because this frame is going to cause you lots of problems. Um, this is the frame that holds the Hitachi pump in place and it's made of some sort of uh, lightweight alloy um, but it is not prone to rusting. So when I took this off, I had a hell of a time getting it off. Um, there was three studs that bolted this to the car and they were completely shot. I've actually got the studs here. So these actually were studs mounted to um, uh, to that plate. Sorry, well, they're not supposed to be mounted to the plate. That's the problem. These these studs are uh, these studs are supposed to be um, just bolts, and um, they're not supposed to be studs. But they end up being like studs because they permanently attach themselves to this. So when this came off, the those those are. Uh, those bolts had to be um, just cut and drilled to pieces. So I was able to drill this one out. I was able to drill this one out. The third one, I could not, I can't get this one out. Um, I tried drilling it out and my drill keeps slipping off and going into the soft metal. And I can't drill it from this side um, because I don't have a drill bit that's long enough to go down all the way through, um, through this uh, without interfering, without my drill interfering with this. So I pr I'm just gonna be gambling here that two out of three is enough. But these rubber mounts on the side, this is what's gonna actually hold the Hitachi pump in place. So when I put my Hitachi pump back on again, I should be able to use this to mount it back to the car. If I decide that the Hitachi pump is completely tossed and I have to replace it with that pump, I'm not even sure how I'm gonna get that pump to attach to this bracket because there's no, um, no places for the bolts to go through here to connect to. So that's gonna be a different problem for a different day, but we'll see how that goes first. Okay, so the next step is gonna be trying to get the Hitachi pump back onto the car. We're gonna do that now. Okay, so the first thing uh, that I've had to do here is mount the uh, compressor back onto the mount. Uh, these two rusty four millimeter hex bolts um, are what actually keeps the uh, thing in place and then there's a stud uh, here that actually I think had a bolt on the end of it but that corroded so that's kind of just hanging off but I think this will this will essentially hold it in place and at this point I just kind of I want to test to see if this works uh, one of the mounting brackets that I mentioned see these things up here these are the things that dis disintegrate uh, but those are the ones I showed you earlier did buy some new ones that's what a new one looks like so not I just pushed that in and hammered it into position and now our brand new 516 so whatever it was it's gonna screw snugly into there and then we're gonna have brand new bolts holding this on and brand new uh, uh what do you call them I don't know those washer bolt thingies so we've got some new ones of those and that should hold this on but first I want to attach it under here is the lines that I had to sever. I didn't really want to have to do this, but there is a severed vacuum hose. And then the other one, the bigger one is, is behind it. And that is going to attach to these new connectors that we've got right here. So that's hopefully what's going to get this thing going. So we're going to give this a test now, jack it up. Uh, maybe mount it, maybe not, Joe, but I just want to see if it'll, if it's going to function. Okay, so we have the bracket in place and just a case of tightening up some of these bolts here. wrench isn't ratcheting it's completely jammed so right now I'm ratcheting the uh, the bolt at the top of the back uh oh I don't like the fact that it just moved there oh but it is on okay good and then we've got this one here and of course that's going to be it there was three three that held it on to begin with I'm only going to have two, unless I figure out how to drill out this bracket. But I think two 
tire three is good enough for me. I'll hold it in place. So my next concern is hooking up the airlines. Um, uh, there's one here that's going to be easy peasy, but there are two up there that I showed you earlier, and those, one of them is right up near the wheel arch. It might require me to actually, um, this is this one here, this big one has a hose coming down, you can kind of get in there, but I can't get both hands in there to, to connect it. So there's a possibility I'm going to have to take off the wheel latch. I'm going to do that one before I put on this one. This one should actually be pretty straightforward, but I don't want to do that one until I got this one on. So I'm going to have a go at that, move the camera out of the way. So amazingly, this seems to have fixed it. Uh, I've actually raised the suspension to, to off-road height and uh, the pump was raising slowly um, which could be an indication that there's still a problem or it could just be that you know the complete the system was completely depressurized because I'd um, uncoupled all the air hoses so I'm, I'm gonna have to keep an eye on it um, for a while yet to find out whether that's uh, a real problem or not but so far engines running pump activated and stayed activated for a good few minutes uh, suspension is a uh, off-road height as I mentioned and I haven't had any faults uh, and the pump has now actually decided that the system is is full and not running and it's pretty warm uh, it was running it was running for quite a long time I was starting to get a little bit worried that uh, that it was actually going to cut off due to overheating and normally this thing would be covered in a shroud so I wouldn't be able to hear it but because I've not got the protective covers on um, I could hear it whenever the pump starts running if the pump decides to kick up right now for example we're going to definitely be able to hear it um, but all seems to be good so I'm really hopeful that this has fixed it and all I need to do is you know connect connect some of these things back up again I did actually forget to uncouple sorry can, can it forget to recouple that hose uh, so the first time I tried this, it didn't work. Um, but my connections over here that I was a little bit worried about, uh, I think these have actually, uh, these actually seem to be working. Uh, if, if I had a problem, the next thing I was gonna try was going to be uh, throw on some carpet cleaner, the foaming carpet cleaner to see if there was any leaks, but uh, I'm not gonna bother because uh, so far was, everything looks good. So I think that's it. Okay, we're going to test it one more time. You can see that the uh, the height is maintained, uh, but I did have to um, put the top side of the panel back on, and that turned into a bit of a nightmare. It took me probably an hour to get the top half of that back on, uh, and I had to uncouple a few things and you know change a few of the bolts around. So I'm going to try and lower the suspension. Can't do that with the door open, so window open instead and suspension should be dropping to be honest it's pretty difficult to tell whether it is or not <laughs> oh you know what hey there's a jack stand underneath let's not do that so selected it back to off-road I hope it should be enough to get it off that jack stand because I'm pretty sure I just put that under there when it was um, at off-road height just because I needed to work some more under it so you can see that I got this panel back on this was the thing that was pretty difficult I also ended up replacing that bolt there because I'd bought some replacements and then totally forgot but there's one on the top side I didn't replace that um, however the one on the bottom was the one that was really rusted so that's okay uh, but getting this piece on was a real pain. I actually had to unbolt, um, unbolt it again. So this is the replacement bolt. So if anyone ever buys this car in the future, if assuming it lasts that long, they could probably wonder why it's not metric <laughs> under there anymore. Oh, 
Okay, so you can see now we've actually cleared, the car is raised up enough to clear the jack stand. Yeah, so always a good idea to not put jack stands under the car when you're going to lower it. Let me try again. All right, car is going down. Nice. Okay, so the reason I did that is I want to see how fast it raises because in the whole time I've owned this car, it's never really risen up that fast. So let's try. It's always given me a warning that it was raising slowly even when it was working properly. So off-road height selected. And let's see how fast it goes this time. I actually don't know how long it's supposed to take. I think I saw it in one guy's video that it was that it was pretty fast. But you can see what's happening with mine is the back end is going up first. Oh well. Okay, so we did get all the way to top, um, top height, ride height, and don't have any errors. And uh, it did take um, a little bit too long, uh, but the system is working. And if it's just, you know, if it's just slow and it's not giving me any suspension faults, then I'm going to be happy with it. Uh, was a bit of a job getting that pump replaced, but um, the kit to replace it was less than $100, and then buying a few bolts and things like that. Uh, a little bit of time, yeah, definitely worth it. Um, and I would recommend that anyone who's having suspension problems, uh, well, first of all, check to make sure you don't have any leaks. One way to do that would be to raise the car to maximum height and then leave it um, for a few days and make sure it's not sinking back down again. So I did that, it wasn't, that wasn't the case. And then the next stop seemed to be checking the pump. So pump seems to have been the issue. Not entirely sure that it's completely fixed the way it was supposed to be from the factory. Uh, but I'm okay with that for a car that's now uh, 13 years old.